Hello and welcome to part 2 of our tutorial on modeling the Skyline Nissan GTR R34 V-Spec. In our last lesson we pretty much took the entire blueprint, cropped it into a back, front, side, and a top image that we are now about to get ready to import into 3DS Max 2015 or whatever version of 3DS Max that you're using really. These concepts are pretty universal to older versions of Max as well. So as you can see I got my software opened up and it's ready to go. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a plane in the top view. So just go ahead and do that. And as you can see over here we're getting a shaded effect in our perspective view but we're not going to be getting it in this view because our wireframe is turned on up here. So you can just go ahead and hit shaded with that and it'll fix that for you. Now for your length segs you want to have only one. For your width segs you're going to be down at one as well. So just go ahead and adjust that. Now the next thing that I'm going to need, um, as you can see we have an entry field for our parameters right over here for our length and width fields. I'm going to literally translate what we made in Photoshop to that. So I'm looking at about 862 by 362. So go ahead and do 362 by 862. Now you might be wondering well why did you type in those entries backwards and I'll show you exactly why I did that in a minute um, but to show you that first let's go ahead and do it how it would have been in order right so it's pretty much just sideways and either way that you do it would be correct it's just that this way is going to have an, another step really when you apply the uh, the actual map to it that you'll see in a moment go ahead and press M for the material editor and uh, I I ignore this just go ahead and double click a standard material double click that diffuse box click the little plus icon right here for maps go ahead and double click bitmap now you're going to find exactly where you stored your project files. Um, for me it's going to be right over here. And you're going to grab this top image. Okay, so go ahead and press this button right over here, assign material to selection. Now as you can see it's shown, grain in, it's shown as a gray image in the viewport, but that's because we haven't pressed this. Show shaded material in viewport. Now you can see that this image has come out skewed in the sense that it just needs to be rotated. So what you could do with this is you could just go back to your material editor, go to diffuse. Now if you had just clicked standard you would have to click the little M button and then it would bring you to the screen just in case you can't get to this but since we're already here what you're going to do is you're going to click on 90 and you're going to rotate it. Now, that's fine if, if, if you want to do it like that. That's also correct. But another way you could do it is to just reverse these and it'll come out like that too. So either, either way is fine really. Um, it doesn't really matter what you do as long as it comes out correct for your reference if that makes sense. And the next step that you're going to do is you're going to go to 0, 0, 0 and align it center on the grid. So I got my top view set up. Now the next thing that I'm going to want to do is make a plane in the uh, side view. Once again, this is on wireframe, so you're going to want to go ahead and click shaded. Hit M to bring up the material editor. Now our side view is at 862 by 266, so I'm just going to enter that in. I'm going to zero this out as well. Select it, hit M. Double click to make a new standard material. 
double click on diffuse hit OK for bitmap bring up your side image assign material to selection show shaded material in viewport now as you can see when we do that it brings up the side image perfectly um, and you want to make sure that the that the quality of these images I'm, I'm noticing that it could be a little bit better now that I've imported it actually into 3ds Max I'm looking at it it could be a little bit better so one trick that you could do to get around that is you could just go back to your material editor um, go to the standard material and for color for self illumination bring that up to 100 and as you can see it'll it'll give you a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a quality boost on your image so we're going to do that for the top view as well <clears throat> okay so I just did 100 now getting out of there we're going to go into our front view and make a plane change that over to shaded now another thing I should bring up is that you can actually toggle your grid on and off by pressing G so I'm going to do that in all of my views Um, get the dimensions for the front view 266 by 368 go ahead and zero that out as we did before hit M to bring up the material editor make a new standard material um, once again make sure your new material is at 100 for your self illumination it's just going to make it a little bit easier to see our actual pictures that way. Go to bitmap, hit front, assign material to selection, show shading material in viewport, which is this button right over here. So now that we have that, you can go ahead and bring that up a little bit. and you can actually just drag that like literally right to the front of your car and then the next step that you could do is you could just press shift and we're gonna bring that all the way back now when it asks you under clone options if you want to make a copy an instance or a reference you're gonna make a copy and you're gonna call this back ref so back reference you can even call it back to whatever whatever works for you is good just make sure that you get into the habit of really kinda like naming your stuff um, as you get into modeling just so that that way your work stays not only organized but it's <clears throat> it's just a great habit to to get into if you're gonna be modeling a lot especially if you're gonna be modeling a lot of cars um, I mean, I, I've I've had times where I've literally like labeled nothing, and it it turns out to be a huge headache sometimes. So just go ahead and hit M for the material editor. Make a new standard material. We're gonna bump up the self illumination to 100. Under diffuse color, go to bitmap, and then we're gonna load the back image and apply those parameters. okay so the first thing that we're gonna address with this is that we have these all lined up I'm sorry we don't have them all lined up we have them all imported into 3ds max now but we are noticing a problem when you look at the front view of our orthographic views it shows the actual back of the car and if you go to the back view it shows the front of the car now we don't want that so a nice way to get around this is you just go to object properties and you're going to turn on what's called back face call so that um, it's not double sided anymore and if the camera was to look at it from this point of view it would look straight at like the, the, the back of the car so now as you can see we're seeing the back of the car right over here if we go to the front notice that we're not seeing the front now so we're going to do the same thing on this plane right over here go to object properties and you're going to click on back face call 
Now notice how you're still not seeing it. And the reason that is, is because you want essentially this back view to disappear not when it's in this position, but when it's in that position. So essentially this plane just needs to be rotated 180 degrees. And the easy way to do that is to just get the rotate tool, turn on the uh, angle snap toggle, and just kind of spin that 180 degrees. Now as you can see when we when we look at the uh, the 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 back of the camera it's pointing straight at the front and that's pointing straight at the, the back right there. So now if you hit Alt W, you'll notice that in our front we're getting a front view and in the back we're getting a, a, a proper back view. What we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna line up all of these uh we're actually going to line up all these planes that the best that we can. Um, so I'm going to start with the with the back view, and what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much actually go in now and start to line these up. Bring that right there, touching the bumper. and then bring that right up so that it's essentially flush with this side view and what you're really actually aiming to do with this entire lining up process is you pretty much just want to make sure that like the tires the bottoms of the tires are touching um, at, at, at the grid really and that's where we're gonna go ahead and press G again so we can kinda of test where we're at with this you can really try to get exact so put that right there take your side view oh that's pretty close could we go up maybe a little bit more Go ahead and take your side view and just kind of bring it right there, touching that mirror. It should be touching the mirror, and it almost is. See, so they're they're really not like a thousand percent precise, but that that's a very close drawing right there. So that's definitely acceptable for for what we're about to do. Again, take your front view, zero this out, just so we can start at the at the origin. Go ahead and switch the camera, take the front view, and then you're going to want to line up those tires. And bring it right up to the front of the car. And that lines up very well actually if, if you look at that that's like right on point with our side and our top view the top view should be sitting right at the origin which it is so now with, uh, you can go ahead and press G to just kind of turn off your your grids again now that we have these lined up okay so that's off kind of zoom out of these um, now a last step we're actually almost done with this that we're gonna do before we actually kind of get into the modeling process is just so that we have these set up as kind of like a permanent reference and that we really don't have to go back and uh, and worry about accidentally moving them while we're modeling if we exit out of something is you could just hit control a to select all of these right click and go to object properties and then where it says show frozen in gray go ahead and uncheck that and then click on freeze. So, so now if you uh, if you see this I can't select it and we have a nicely set up reference image 
uh, reference images going for us. And in the next tutorial, we're going to actually begin by roughing out the basic cage. And I'm going to talk to you guys about a few modeling principles and different methods that we can go about when it comes to creating this actual car.